mastermind of young bride Annie Duani's brutal murder has spoken publicly about the plot, admitting, I'm not proud of what I did. Annie, 28, was killed in the back of a taxi while on honeymoon with her new husband in Gugilathu Township, near Cape Town on November 13, 2010. She had been married for only a few weeks to British millionaire nursing home boss Shreen Duani, now 41. She suffered a single gunshot to her neck after her husband fled the taxi which was later found abandoned with her body in it. He said his life was spared as the two gunmen forced him out of the vehicle at gunpoint, before murdering his new bride. Dot. Now gangster Juan Palumbo has given his version of the robbery murder to a TV documentary team. Recalling events leading up to Anna's murder, Mbalumbo, 40, told the program that taxi drivers Ola Tongo came to see him at a hotel he was working at. Tongo came to me and he said do I know any hitmen? I was shocked. He said Tongo told him that he would be bringing a couple into the township and the husband wants the wife to be killed. Tongo said so this guy wants his wife to be murdered and it must look like it's a hijacking. Mr. Duani has always maintained his innocence and accused the three men convicted of Annie's murder, of framing him. In 2014 a South African court declared him not guilty of charges he arranged the murder. The judgment meant in effect he had been framed. Asked why he had got involved in the murder plot, Mbalumbo said, to tell the truth, I don't know really. That's the question I've been asking myself all these years, why did I say yes? In the TV series Mbalumbo tells of his anguish over his involvement over the killing. He was granted immunity from prosecution for helping police investigating Annie's murder. Asked if he thought about how a woman was going to end up dead, he broke down in tears and said, Because of my role, I'm still stuck here. I'm not proud of what I did. But his supposed remorse was dismissed as crying crocodile tears by Annie's family who are still searching for answers to the tragedy in their quest for closure. They urged him to face them himself and tell the full story of how Annie was shot dead in a taxi near Cape Town 11 years ago. Annie's uncle Ashok Indocha told Mail Online, even after all these years, we still have so many questions that need answering. There is still key information to be revealed and holes in the story to be filled. Some of the mobile phones used by the men who killed Danny have never been found. Does he know anything about what happened to these and who got rid of them?
there could be very important information on those phones. We were told there were text messages that were sent between them. We are still anxious to see those messages on those phones and know who said what. But Mr. Hindocha added, tears are not enough. When Shreen was found not guilty, the judge in the trial said Ndalumbo was not immune from prosecution. But he was never charged. He has been lucky to escape justice. Mr. Duani said he and his wife were kidnapped as they toured the township in Trongo's taxi. Tongo, who is serving 18 years for the murder, said he was paid R15,000, 700 pounds, to organize the hitman. But millionaire care home boss Mr. Duani, who fought an extradition battle for nearly four years, said he and his wife were victims of a random kidnapping and his life was spared as the two gunmen pushed him out of the vehicle window. At his trial, he admitted sleeping with male prostitutes and paying for sex. The judge was also told that he surfed gay websites the day after his wife had been murdered. However, Duani was acquitted of all charges and walked out of court a free man. The judge found she could not rely on the police investigation and that statements taken from the alleged accomplices had been contradictory. The court also saw CCTV of Mr. Duani viewing gay porn while his father-in-law Vinod Hindo just sat close to him in a hotel lobby after flying to South Africa. More footage showed Mr. Duani disappearing in the hotel lobby with Tongo, and a taxi driver re-emerging carrying a paper bag. Mr. Duani said he was paying him his fee for driving the honeymooners. The post-mortem examination confirmed Annie was neither sexually assaulted nor raped. She was shot through the hand and neck, possibly as she lay face down in the taxi. Tongo confessed to his part in the killing and is serving a reduced sentence. Last year he was due to be released on parole, but was kept behind bars after opposition from Ani's family. Her father Vinod flew back to Cape Town to question him further, but was unhappy with the answers he gave and decided against him being given his freedom. Zawamad Odegwab is serving life and the man who fired the shot that killed Annie, Zolal Mjini died from cancer in prison while serving his sentence. The four-part documentary series Annie, The Honeymoon Murder will be available on Discovery Plus on Saturday, November 13th.